I am recording this, so let me go back to my share screen. Okay, and again, um, I've already went through the introductions and talked about yesterday's in-person meeting. So the purpose of this public meeting is for, to get feedback for the Brickyard Bridge project and the grant application, um, not for the whole development area. This is specifically for the bridge project. Um, again, we're with the Metropolitan Transportation Planning Organization, and so we deal with transportation things, roads, bridges, um, stuff of that nature. So part of the grant application process is we have to have a public, public meeting and include this feedback in our grant application. So if you registered anytime 930 or earlier, you should have received an email from me that had a public comment form attached. If you registered for this after 930, I'll send it to you after this is over. Um, you're also welcome to send emails directly to me or to the generic mtpo at kingsporttn.gov. As long as we have this um, feedback by September 18th, the comments, those comments will be included as part of the grant application uh, that we submit. The grant application is due October 2nd. It is a TAP grant, which is Transportation Alternatives Program, and those are federal funds. It's a competitive grant, so there's no guarantees that we'll get it, but we're gonna try. Um, it's federal funds, and it's for non-traditional transportation projects. So not you know traditional roads or anything like that, but non-traditional transportation projects. Um, what you should be seeing on your screen is the um, rendering of the pedestrian bridge. Again, the, the reason for this meeting is to get feedback, get your thoughts on the bridge itself, you know, every, everything, the design, everything. So um, on the picture, the building that I, you should see my pointer, it's a, um, that's the restroom building at Centennial Park that is currently there. So you can see kind of in between these two buildings, there's steps right here. So there's elevators and steps. Um, this will definitely have to be, you know, ADA compatible. And so it goes across the railroad tracks. This would be Cherokee Street in downtown Kingsport, Centennial Park over here to the right of the screen, go across the railroad tracks over to the Brickyard Park development. Um, we also have included a couple of conceptual plans and I've put both of these on here just so you can see nothing is set in stone. These are both conceptual. This one is from 2017. Um, it shows you know, Brickyard Park ball fields. Those are complete. The Miracle Field is complete. And then this would be private development and this would be the outdoor venue. And then this is like um, trails and stuff. This is the old, the 2017 conceptual drawing. And this shows roadway linking into Martin Luther King, Brickyard Drive, and over to Cherokee Street. There was another one that was in the paper. Um, this is the newer one, this is 2020. Big difference, it doesn't show the road network, um, but this is, of course, the ball fields that are there, the Miracle Field that's already there. And this shows the pump track for bicycles and then the skate park relocation. So if you've seen in the news about the Domtar um, changes, um, so they're looking at putting the skate park here. Uh, again, private development and an outdoor green space, which could be used for um, concerts, festivals, you know, craft shows, whatever. Um, there are no set plans yet, but remember the purpose of this meeting is to get feedback on the bridge project only. Um, Clarksville, this is a large amount to ask for. Uh, Clarksville did receive an, a $1.8 million in federal funds. That doesn't include the match, but uh, $1.8 million in federal funds for a pedestrian bridge in 2019. They applied four times. So, you know, we're holding out hope and we're going to submit this application, but we just want to hear from everyone and get feedback. Um, again, you can raise your hand and we can unmute you and or you can put questions in the Q&A box or the chat box. So I will, and Bill or James or Michael, if anybody else wants to say anything, you're welcome to. 
but we will watch for people to raise their hands to speak. Leslie, can you see the answer to the question there? Yeah, it looks like somebody's been answering them. I'm working on them. Okay. I mean, I'll just I'll just add to everything Leslie said is I think it's important to remember that the drawing and not all I'm doing is reemphasizing what she said. The drawing is conceptual. That's what this meeting is about is to get and let yesterday's meeting we got some good feedback is to get some feedback on what people would like to see in this bridge and what you know if you have thoughts on the drawing or if you have thoughts on what we should see on the bridge um that's that's what we're here for this is by no means they're not out there pouring the footers for this bridge right now so i mean there's any kind of we can talk about anything and um, the tap grant would only cover the construction of the bridge um, to get to construction you have to go through environmental design and right-of-way um, that project we're starting this project using 80 percent federal funds and 20 percent local to get through the environmental design and right-of-way phase and then you know, if we get this grant if, if we don't get it this year we'll try again next year but hopefully we'll get it you know uh, but we do have this project underway to start with the preliminary engineering, the de, uh, environmental and design phases. I don't. I don't think anybody knows what the cost of the one in Irwin was. There's a question about that. I don't. Oh, Irwin. Yeah, the, that was a big project. Went over the railroad tracks there. Somebody, somebody had asked you know, what what the cost of that bridge was. We, I don't. I don't think anybody knows that here. And I've received a couple of comments from a couple of different people um, more about the development of the area. And so those that I've received since they're outside the realm of the MTPO, I have forwarded to our, um, I've re responded to, but I've also forwarded them, forwarded them to our public relations department to get those in the appropriate hands. So um, to, to finish uh, answering Jason's question, um, this current bridge project is estimated at $3 million. Um, the difficulty with a vehicular bridge, uh, the bridge itself uh, might not cost much more. The, the, the real other cost would be the retaining walls and the other roadway network improvements that you'd have to make to to be able to um, tie that into the road network. Um, for example, if you followed Cherokee uh, Street and just, just built a bridge there, you still have to make that elevation. And if, if you don't wipe out the Moose Lodge property in Centennial Park, you would have a retaining wall on both sides so you could get, you know, um, I'll, I'll say it's like 28 feet in the air. You'd have to be with the road surface to have enough room to be over the railroad and still have room for your, obviously it'd be a bigger structure that you have to have to carry vehicular traffic instead of uh, heads. Um, so that that's, we've not found a good way to do a vehicular bridge uh, in, in, in our attempts, but it was, and has been looked at several times. Um, trying to figure out a good way to, to do that. And, uh, and I, that's an active railroad crossing too, right, Michael? So, I mean, you know, if, if the road goes in and out over there, we can, that railroad crossing can be used. Yes, that, that's actually, you're still actually in the rail yard right there. And that's, that's part of the reason that it is uh, closed as often as it is. It's not just a train going through. They'll, they'll pull a, a, a train, a, a set up and back it in. They're doing switching there. Uh, and this, this, the Kingsport location's actually gotten busier since they closed Irwin's yard because, for example, the, the white that's, that crosses Main Street here uh, is, has been put in service uh it was it was dormant for about 10 or 12 years and then they had to put it back in service because they lost the ability to use the the roundhouse in uh, Irwin. so there's 
it's more active than it was before. So I think ultimately the goal is to make sure that at all times people can uh, get downtown, even if it is blocked uh, for vehicular traffic by the train, uh, you can still get back and forth to enjoy the amenities of downtown with Brickyard Park, you know. So another question in the Q&A is, this is actually a pedestrian bridge, not a bicycle bridge, correct? It's it's both. Um, the uh, bicycles would, you know, be taken up probably the elevator instead of the steps, but um, it is for both. Um, does the width allow for an arched bridge from ground to ground so bicycles can be used or is the height of the track too high for the slope to match ADA? Whew, Michael. <laughs> so what, what you would normally do is you would build the bridge uh, to, to I'm, I'm rewording what you're asking here a little bit. And I apologize, but normally what you would do to be cost effective is you'd still build the bridge at the height you need to be clear of the railroad tracks uh, because you wouldn't do an arch bridge because this we're not crossing one or two tracks. I think there's five tracks we're crossing right here, but don't hold me to that. It's been a while since I looked at it. So you'd have to be, you'd be building a bigger bridge than you need in the middle to clear the outside tracks. So you do a horizontal bridge like this, and then you would have some ramp system on each side. Um, the cost of doing ramps uh, versus elevator, uh, you know, something we can definitely look at. So, um, uh, especially, uh, I'd say it's it's very constructible on the uh, south side of the railroad tracks, the Brickyard Park. You know, there's room to do that. The, the only other difficulty on doing ramps versus elevators on this side of the picture is where do you put all of that linear footage? If, if we're 25 foot high, um, we need, oh, I just went blank. Um, is it like 10 to one or something like that? Well, you, you, you're you're going to do um, for a ramp. You, you can go up to an inch per foot or a twelve to one. But then you also have to put landings every for every thirty foot of run. You got to have a five foot landing and stuff. So uh, let's just call it three hundred foot of length of ramp that you would need to do somewhere there. So I, I'm not saying it's not possible. Um, but, um, you know, something that would have to be looked at further. Uh, and those are design details that I, I would think, you know, we, we want to hear your comments like that. Um, and I don't know, Leslie, have you mentioned already the comment sheet? Uh, yes, um, I'll mention it again, though, in case anybody else has tuned in since then. Anybody that registered probably 930 this morning or earlier, um, you should have gotten an email from me with the comment form attached. So, you know, fill that out, send it in, or send an email. There's also um, instructions on the bottom of the comment form where to mail it through just the regular mail, where to email it. Have those to us by September 18th. You're welcome to provide feedback after that, but as long as we have it by September 18th, we can include it as part of the grant application process. The grant application is due October 2nd. Um, and then, uh, there's a comment in the Q&A that says, I like the idea of ramps rather than an elevator due to maintenance and the possibility of vandalism. Um, so, uh, yeah, we heard that comment yesterday too. Um, but any, any comments like this, please, please you know, send them in so we can actually print them off and have a record of it to go with the grant application. Um, Another comment, I love this bridge that makes it so easy to access the downtown area from Brick, Brickyard Park. Thanks to your committee for applying for a grant to make this possible. Best wishes on receiving it. Thank you. Um, Thank you, Kevin. Cal uh, Calvin, I saw your comments in the chat box. I just hadn't got to them yet. So Calvin's asking, um, will there be a connecting road from the homes to the bridge? I was there on site last week and the distance between the Brickyard access road and Cherokee Street seems to be a long distance to walk. So 
that goes back to these conceptual plans. This one from 2017 shows the road network and we were actually having this conversation yesterday because this one, I don't know if it just doesn't show the area or you know what, but um, we'll have to find out for sure about the road, um, the conceptual road and see, you know, which way they're leaning because I thought that the one showing the roadway, but it may just be that it's not shown on this other one because it really doesn't even go up that far. So on this yeah. drawing up here in the left hand corner is where the pedestrian bridge would be. And on this one, it's right here, it's the green. So you see it crossing to Centennial Park. Go ahead, James. Well, I was just gonna add that you are correct. Um, in our RFP meeting the other day, we've talked about the roads connecting. So Calvin, the, the plan is, is that this plan that Leslie's showing right now is correct um, in terms of the road work, the roadway. Um, we, the plan is to have that road connect to Cherokee Street um, so that there are three ways in and three ways out. Um, and that is going to industry, going Martin Luther King or going to Cherokee. Um, and so, and then also the plan is to, unless we get some radical design, the plan is to have the um, green space festival grounds in the quadrant, I call it quadrant three, there where it's purple, so that it is the closest access uh, to the bridge. Okay, so Calvin's also asking, will CSX permit usage of the crossing? My understanding was that the railroad planned to close the crossing permanently. Does anybody have information on that? I haven't heard anything in any of our meetings about one way or another on that. There, there was some conversations two or three years ago on is that considered a public crossing or not? And I think ultimately we figured out it was a public crossing. So it, it wouldn't be a matter of them just being able to close it. Um, you know, I think I think there would be there would be dialogue and, and uh, agreements from the city before that was closed because it is considered a public crossing. And Bill, I heard you mention yesterday you might want to chime in about CXX and how they feel well, about this bit bridge. Well, I got a call from a former employee of CSX who we talked to occasionally about railroad issues, and he was their safety officer and. He said, uh, just his opinion, because he's not representing CSX now, but he worked for him for 35 years. He said this was excellent from his perspective. So I'm not saying that uh, that's what CSX, that's what he said. He thought it was an excellent idea, excellent project, and uh, was very supportive of it. So. Um, there's another comment. Greenville, South Carolina, downtown park has lots of ramps that make it really attractive when walking. Um, John Purdue says, it's my understanding the city owns the crossing, not CSX. Um, there's another in the Q&A, just a thought, bicycles will not use elevators. Just trying to think of what critics will say so we can keep good PR and avoid the one bad apple syndrome when that, that will distract from this excellent project. And then another comment, um, any problems with hot exhaust from the locomotives to pedestrians, at times they sit there for long periods coupling up. And do we have other ideas of ways to use the grant money in this area? Uh, typically, I'm gonna answer that second one first. Typically the um, TAP grants have been used for Greenbelt. And um, that's, you know, we've used, uh, gotten a lot of TAP grants to extend the Greenbelt. We did have a West End Greenbelt, extending it from right there at Rotherwood on to um, um, a Stone Drive 11W right there in the Allendale area. We applied for that one four times and didn't get it. So we have moved that project to another uh, set of funding. It's still an 80-20, still federal funds, um, but we're gonna proceed with that project as an STBG instead of a, applying for a TAP grant. Last year, we submitted two TAP grant applications. One was for the West End Greenbelt and this one, and um, we didn't get either one of them, but this will be the second time we've submitted for this bridge. So we're hoping this time um and i don't know how to answer amy's question about the 
any problems with hot exhaust from the locomotives to pedestrians. At times they sit there for long periods coupling up. That'll be something to uh, consider when we you know, get further in this process. Leslie, if, you, if you'll check your email, um, oh, I don't we, email. We, we just got a, uh, the revised concept that had merged those two concepts together after those uh, conversations that have been had. Uh, so we have one that goes the housing and the, and the new roadways both. I don't have it yet. Well, I'm probably over my limit. <laughs> if, if you want, I can share it on my screen if you'd like. The, uh, there's a question about using the money for only the bridge because, you know, if there's trails connected and there's enough money there, grant money, we would, we could include roads or, or excuse me, trails to the uh, bridge that's, that's eligible, eligible project. Well, this, this application is only for the bridge, but I mean, if we get this and we want to apply for trail, you know, later. Then, we can do that. Yeah, we can do that. Too. But those are eligible projects for the TAP program. Oh, I like that drawing better, Michael. Yeah, it, it's incorporated everything. Um, um, so I see that question now. Definitely worth applying for if we get the grant or be required to use it for only a bridge. We would be required to use it for what the application was for, which this one will be just for the bridge. Um, one suggestion for the elevator is to use one like, like Ikea has. The double doors would allow bicycles and wheelchairs to enter and exit without having to try and turn around. Let's see. Good suggestion. We've got another comment in the chat box. These are some good points that folks are bringing up. The locos do sit in the yard quite a bit, but the longest they've sat that I've noticed from Riverview is no longer than a half hour. And someone else says, could this be part of a downtown walking plan might be appealing to TAC? Um, yeah, I mean, and we've got the Heritage Trail downtown and stuff um, that it could you know, tie into because the Heritage Trail's right there. Actually, it, the Heritage Trail has a spot at Centennial Park um, and that's actually a turnaround point, but it would lead right there to it. But yeah, you all please um, put these thoughts down on those forms or just you know compile them in an email and send them to us so we actually have a um, record from individuals, from citizens, um, showing what your feedback was. We're also working on a bike and ped plan for the entire area. And that's gonna include some things for downtown. Jason, if you could share with us where, which Ikea location has what you're talking about, um, I'd like to, I mean, on the forum or here, either one, it'd be nice to, to document that. Uh, if that's a design detail that we can make things easier, that's great. Charlotte, okay, thank Charlotte. you. Anything else? Anybody? I don't see anybody raising their hand. No other comments right now. What's the timetable for the master plan and bridge? The application is due October 2nd. Um, we won't find out anything about it for probably till spring or summer of next year about this grant. The um, preliminary phases, the environmental and design, we can, we'll probably start moving on it in the next um, couple of months. I, we have to do a project initiation packet through um, for TDOT to start this process and then wait on them to give us the okay. So we've got some of those forms out for signature right now. As soon as we get those back, um, we'll be entering the project initiation packet 
online and submitting it to TDOT. And so then they just have to you know, initiate the contract and um, get the process started. So as soon as that, I, I expect it just to be start, start soon for the environmental and design phases. And Calvin Sneed says, I also think the bridge needs to be accessible to Cement Hill. I noticed no parking on the other side of the green area to the left in the picture from the area, but there is on the other bigger picture that Leslie had before. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I believe this, this concept at this time was being developed to minimize um, impact to at what was at that time privately owned um, Cement Hill. Uh, I don't think the city owned Cement Hill yet, but James, you correct me how, how it goes. I think I think what we can say is Domtar in the city has agreed to a trade of property so that the city will own this property. And that's definitely something that can be adjusted. Yeah, you're, you're correct. The, these designs, requests for these designs and whatever have been out for probably weeks. And I think since that time, all the uh, Domtar stuff has gone down. So I'm, I'm not sure anything's really going to take into account because there, everything over there in that white area of the picture Leslie's showing now um, was Domtar's property. And so now with the agreement of the trade and land, um, you know, we have a little bit more flexibility over there. And um, uh, so we can do some things over there. I, I will, again, this is meeting is just about the bridge, but I will address just to, uh, I'm, I'm all about putting rumors to bed despite what you may hear, there's not going to be high rises and there's not going to be, uh, you know, buildings and things being built on uh, Cement Hill. So, you know, don't let that start getting in your mind about how to develop a plan there because um, there is some things that have gone on in Cement Hill with, um, you know, with fly ash and some things like that, that we won't be penetrating the ground any more than to do walking trails and biking trails and things like that. So, in the scope of what's going to go on at Cement Hill, it, it's going to tie in very nicely to the pump track um, and the biking and hiking trails um, and skate park down in the uh, what I call quadrant two. Down kind of in this area, and you'll notice you'll notice the skate park is drawn in here because that's that's part of the trade is Cloud Park that uh, currently includes the skate park would be the other half of that trade the city would give. And so we're talking about uh, rebuilding a skate park here. Another comment, and um, this could be more of an artistic piece, perhaps tied to Kingsport history, maybe additional funding available for that. And then another comment, um, we definitely think the bridge will be a huge asset to downtown Kingsport. We are very excited to see Kingsport grow I love going to other cities where you can walk to everything. Uh, James was just saying yesterday after our meeting that this was one of the most positive meetings he'd been involved in in a while. So, I mean, both of these meetings have gone very well. You know, a lot of times you hear people, um, only when they have complaints, they want to voice their opinions, but you know, it's very nice to get all this positive feedback. So we really appreciate it. Is there anything else? I'm not seeing any other comments. Nobody raising their hand. Oh, there's another comment. Yay, no high rises on Cement Hill. <laughs> Thanks for that update, James. I'm extremely proud of the foresight that you all are taking with this area. Thank you for this meeting. Um, this also, let me throw, throw this in, Leslie, helps economically. I mean, um, you're, you're tying in a lot of people with downtown and businesses are going to like it. it. It has a good economic development factor as well. 
Yeah, um, and just, Calvin's asking, are there any models that you all are basing our concept on? James, not that I'm aware of. I mean, that's the purpose for the RFP, isn't it? Oh, yeah. If we're talking about the whole property, I mean, um, I don't know if he's talking about the bridge or the whole property, but I can just tell you quadrants three and four, which are the top parts up there. Um, all of that when as we're designing the rfp right now i mean what we're doing is we're we're setting a minimum requirements for homes and green space and so what will happen is um the um the the builders and the uh, developers i guess mainly the developers will come back with a uh, a design of what they expect it to look that are in the parameters of what we set um, and so, you know, it could vary. It could be 126 homes. It could be 150 homes. Um, but we're, we put it back on them to bring us the design because as, as much as we think, you know, this may be the best thing look right here, there may be a, a developer that comes back with just an idea that we had never thought about. That was just something incredible and it wins the RFP and we go with it. So uh, I don't think you know, they may base it on something. We've thrown around the idea of some things that have been done in Charleston and in Nashville, but uh, that'll all be on the developers as they uh, start coming through the RFP process for, for anything up in quadrant three and four. And as far as the bridge, um, we had some early, early examples and this, um, this one was kind of the suggested, but again, we're open to, you know, suggestions on it as far as, I mean, like several people have mentioned ramps um, and stuff like that. So that's what we're looking for. Um, it will be nice to have something positive to talk about. Thank you. Uh, and then as a downtown resident, I'm very supportive of this project and will assist in any way I can to make this happen. Another one, uh, this will absolutely be a big asset to downtown businesses. Um, and then would, it, would a roundabout ramp for the bridge be more or less expensive than an elevator with stairs? Um, that was one of the things we talked about yesterday. Uh, Michael, do you wanna elaborate on that a little bit? We're really not sure about the cost for a ramp versus elevator at this point, I don't think. I'm trying to understand a roundabout ramp, is that like like the, the idea of a circular staircase, but take it into a ramp. Is that the, I guess the thought process there? Um, it, it comes down to length and the amount of foundation supports you have. Um, I, I, I couldn't, I, I couldn't answer that question at this time, really, Calvin. Um, like the circular ramp at Clingman's Dome. Yeah, I'm not sure. Some of the stadiums have that, that round uh, circular um, pedestrian bridge. Yeah, I'm not prepared to answer that question at this time. Um, and somebody said you did say that you're recording this meeting to be shared, correct? Yes, I am recording it, and we can post um, the recording on our website. Um, so I can do that. We are recording it. Um, what is in the blue area between the ball field and the homes? I think that was like a pond, wasn't it? Yeah, that's a detention basin. It, I think it exists today and may get bigger to accommodate more, more uh, impervious area. Is that right, James? It's not going to get bigger. They built it too big. That, that's not the right wording, but they built it large enough already to accommodate what may go on over here. So it's it's too big for what it's doing now, but once we're finished, it won't have to be redone. Okay, any more comments or questions about the bridge? I said thank you, I'll put it on Kingsport ME News for the citizens. And I'm not really sure on the Zoom format, it may automatically email i don't know who all how all it automatically emails once that recording's done i don't know uh, but we'll make sure it's on the website like like leslie said i don't think this has been mentioned but um this project is going to complement what's going on on main street as well so uh, those that aren't familiar with that we're doing a lot of 
reconstruction redevelopment on Main Street, and this will be a great complement to that project. I don't see any hands raised. Let's see. Laugh. Someone told me to put a zip line across the tracks instead so Bob Miller can use it. <laughs> yeah, and he would. <laughs> Okay, last call, questions, comments. Let's see, there's another one, let's see. I'm really excited about the future of Brickyard. I do think it will serve as a model for other cities if it's done correctly, which I know it will. I stand ready to help in any way possible. It will be a crown jewel in Kingsport's cap. Thank you, Calvin. That's what James was saying in our meeting yesterday. You know, they get one shot at this, wanna do it right. They do have a steering committee and a lot of people working on this. So again, the people that have sent me comments not related to the bridge. I have forwarded those on to our public relations department um, for them to get them to the correct people. But anything related to the bridge, I'm collecting and will be part of our uh, grant application process. Okay, last call, no hands raised. No comments, questions, uh, feel free to email us. Um, Everybody that's registered should have gotten an email from me, so you have my direct email address. Um, if you didn't, if you registered after 9.30 this morning, I will send it as soon as this meeting is over. Send you a copy of the comment form. Get your comments into us by September 18th uh, to be included in the grant application, or you, know, you can send them after September 18th. I just prefer them before September 18th so we can include them as part of the grant application process. So we appreciate all of you all. I said, thank you. Have a nice Friday and weekend. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank right, you everybody for, for attending and giving your feedback. And please get those comments into us. Thank you.